guys, welcome to another week of Connect Groups. Hey, it's just to start off, just want to say a huge thank you to you and uh, anyone who has signed up for the 24-7 prayer week. We hope that you had an amazing time with the Lord, just spending time interceding for our city, our nation, and uh, praying alongside your prayer points. And uh, also a few couple of announcements as uh, before we start. Uh, Alpha, it's week four this week. This is the final week to invite someone along. So maybe you have someone already in your mind for quite a while. Hey, you never know the difference between just dropping a text message, inviting someone along. It could potentially change your life forever. Another announcement is we've got baptism on the 3rd of April. Well, if you are if you are considering uh, getting baptized and uh, maybe you know someone who's considering or thinking of baptism, hey, why don't you visit the link below sign up now and it's it's just a huge celebration of just walking into the Christian faith. It's a public declaration of an inward grace. So if you're not getting a chance to get baptized yet, sign up. We're really excited for that day. Well last Sunday we've got Mark Knight preaching to us. Amazing word and uh, let's jump into the exegesis uh, shortly. So let me just say a word of prayer. Lord, we just thank you that we can gather as a community of believers. We're just reading and looking at scripture together. So we ask God in this moment, would you speak to us? Our hearts are open. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hey everyone, Hi. welcome to this It's Connect Group Bible Study. We're going to be looking at Mark chapter 4. Four yes, passage that Mark Knight spoke to us uh, about on Sunday. If you haven't yet met Mark, he's the... Uh, you the, should. You, you should, should meet He's him. a great guy. Mm -hmm. He's the new director of St. Paul's Theological College. So if you like what you saw, come to an open day. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to be... Uh, we've been going through this year through the book of Mark. And uh, we're um, looking today at the parable of the sower. So Kate's going to read that to us. Mark chapter 4. Not sower. Sower. Good. Good, good, good clarity right uh, up there. <laughs> Actually, the passage is confusing enough. Uh, so, yeah, that's good to get that out of the way. Yeah. Um, so, uh, let's uh, begin. Mark chapter 4, verses 1 to 23. Have it open in front of you. As always, as you're going along, if you Put can question marks mark on, on the it. side, any questions, exclamation mark for, for anything that stands out to you, and an arrow for anything that you can apply to your life. That'll help you discuss it as we go along. Brilliant. So, again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables and in his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seeds, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was very shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Then Jesus said, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parable. He told them, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, and ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven." Then Jesus said to them, don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes the word that was sown in them. Others, like seeds sown on rocky places, hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word. But the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires for other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. 
Others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it and produce a crop, some 30, some 60, some 100 times what was sown. He said to them, do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Instead, don't you put it on its stand? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out into the open. If anyone has ears to hear, let them hear. Oh man. So let's pause there. Oh, that was a long one. <laughs> yeah, let's pause there and discuss anything that came up as we were reading. Okay, we're going to follow uh, the path through this that Mark used uh, in his talk on Sunday. And he started by beginning where Jesus landed uh, at the end of this section with verse um, 21. And what's interesting is this this parable is a bit confusing. It's a bit, it's hidden. It's sort of, you kind of think you've got your head around it and then something doesn't quite fit. And the more you think about it, sometimes you get insight and other times it becomes more uh, unclear. And um, Mark asked this question, he said, why is it that God seems to always be available, but he's not always understandable? And no. um, and he said, look, the, the reason Jesus uses parables is not to trick us. It is to teach us. And he says, um, really, what you see in verse 21 to 23 here is we see what God wants to teach us and how he wants to teach us. Mm-hmm. So starting with the second of those, what does he want to teach? For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed. So anything that is hidden in this isn't hidden so that you won't find it. It's so that by discovering it, it will help you learn. He used the example of they've been trying to teach their kids how to not give away surprises Mm -hmm. with birthday presents. Those are really hard. Really hard. Our girls haven't got that yet. Yeah, no, no. We bought you this or we didn't buy you this. (laughs) He said, but at the same time, they didn't want to teach their kids to be secretive because that's not helpful as well. And they came up with this line, we don't have secrets, we only have surprises. Surprises. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's what God's doing here. Like, what is he wanting to teach us is hidden but it's meant to be disclosed and, and the what does he want to, of dis- kings yeah. to seek out a, you know whatever you don't know yeah yeah it's yeah. good to seek out what is hidden um uh it says in the proverbs what does he want to disclose to us well we're told that in verse 11 the secret of this kingdom has been given to you the disciples what they've been given they've been given jesus he, he gives us his son himself, his identity. God gives himself. There's nothing more that he can, he, he can give. And the amazing thing about that is that like the disciples, I don't always understand Jesus. I really don't always obey him or trust him or follow him. Mm-hmm. But I can still receive him because he is a gift and he is a person. So that's what he wants to teach us. And then that influences how he wants to teach us. Mm-hmm. So... The the father didn't send him into the world to hide him, but nor did he send him in the world to promote him the way that we would think that we should be promoted. So, you know, he says, do you bring in a lamp to put it under a bowl or a bed? Like, you know, that's a pretty sarky comment, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's like either the light goes out or it sets fire to the house. So (laughs) it's like you wouldn't put the Wi-Fi router in a box under the stairs. Like, (laughs) no, no, you put it on the stand. If it it, is, move it. Yeah, if it is, move it. That's that's an error. Uh, And basically what he's saying is that that God has put these things on a stand for you to discover them. Uh, But the world's lamp stand is self-promotion glorification and my gain is your loss we're in competition with each other but God does not compete with us for space he doesn't overwhelm us uh, and where that lands is you know he only gives us what as much as manage. we can manage like I'm yeah. a work in progress I love this in verse 33 with many similar parables Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they, they could understand, could understand yeah. I love that like Jesus was he, he he was limited not because of what he could say. He could go on forever, but it's like, because of you, I'm, you know. He's a patient teacher. Yeah, it's basically. like his exegesis eventually finished uh, because of them, not him. Um, but also the other thing is, uh, I mean, the strangest lampstand that this light gets put on at the end is the cross. It's the, it's the weirdest stand. Um, and his current lampstand, as we'll see, is the church, which is even more risky. So... Delving into that question, how does he want to teach us himself, disclose himself to us? Well, he he does it relationally. 
in the Gospels, personally, conversationally, intimately. And the reason he does it that way is because if it was just informa- if information was all I needed, then to try and lose weight, I could just read a book about how bad cake is. And boom, you'd look like, I don't know. Brad Pitt. A Gap model. Like you already did, no uh, <laughs> uh But the problem is, it's not that I just don't know enough about cake, it's that I love cake. Uh, that's why it's hard. Like, if information was all we needed, <laughs> then the internet would have solved everything. Whereas actually, uh, that really interestingly, we're sort of entering into this sort of dark age where the abundance of information is we creating... We are not in... lacking content Yeah, we're not right lacking now. content at all. So just delving into that before we discuss this, relationally and personally is how he teaches us you know i love this from adam grant people are more excited excited to learn with you, with you. than from you uh conversationally jesus are is asked 187 questions he asks 307 i love like, that he's curious yeah like he, it's, or he's or he's encouraging us to be curious he, he invites us into, yeah, the conversation. into the conversation and it's intimate as well i think it's like this if you don't feel the question it makes the answer harder to receive. So I could just tell you answers, but if you don't care about it, or if you haven't yet felt it or, or, or landed that in your life, it's a lot harder to be yeah. interested. I think that's why Alpha's so good. You know, like it kind of, it's you're not giving all the answers. That's really important. You're giving, that, space, you're giving for space for people, for people to, work to work out, out themselves and feel. And actually work themselves. out what their actual questions are. Because most people aren't ans- asking questions that are sort of, simple it takes time to yeah. work it out apologetics are like really important but a lot of people coming to faith is you know they've got space, to, space to work out listening well, you, you, you've got this from Jordan Peterson. before a problem can be solved it must be formulated precisely and that's why talking to somebody or giving an answer too quickly can shut down the process yeah um i love this from jim mcneish as well as a good guide only ask vulnerable questions and what he means by that Ooh. is um is not to go, oh, well, I have this friend who hypothetically may be thinking about struggling with this. It's, no, no, this is me. This is my struggle. In my, that's a vulnerable question. And that's and where that connect will... groups really come to life, isn't it? When yeah. we're vulnerable with each other, when we can ask, yeah, when you ask vulnerable questions. And, and you see this played out in verse 34. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his disciples, he explained everything. And I think a learning point is to oh, make sure... That. How much would you like to be in that inner circle? Well, we get to be in that inner circle. That's, that's true, that's, that's, that's true. That's what, that's what we're doing now. Right? <laughs> and, I, and I think it's that... The learning point is to take time. Those people that have been entrusted to you, take time to make sure they're on the same page as you. Your kids, your friends, your uh, the people in your circle that you're doing faith and life together invest the time because Jesus gives them time attention and Mm. space to answer the questions but also in that intimacy allows them to question yeah allows them to well it's this Tim Keller's thing don't just answer their questions help them question their their answers answers. because because often it's the answers that we think oh that works and actually the more we think about it like that doesn't (laughs) okay so let's try and land this who have been your best teachers Question two, what environments have you grown the most? What do you mean by that? Um, so. Grown in the most or grown the grown most? It, grown in the most. Grown yeah. in the most. Okay, that yeah. makes more sense. And question three, what can you adapt, apply from your answers to the above two questions in how you allow yourself to be discipled and disciple others? Okay, so... Having looked at why Jesus uses this strange uh, parable to teach us, let's look at the details of it It ourselves. is strange, and it's also a bit shocking. What's that bit that yeah. says, like, you know, I've done this on purpose? Yeah, well... Like, well We'll get to that in a minute. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute, yeah. I, I loved Mark's sort of summary of the, the... You get the parable twice. You get it to the crowd, and then you get it lower down here, the same parable with the explanation in as well, spelled out for the disciples. And uh, Mark used this. He said, uh, you've got no shoots, no roots, and no fruits. All I can think there is like, he eats, shoots, and leaves. Eats, shoots, and leaves. Yeah, no, no shoots, no roots, no fruits. So listen... A farmer went out to sow his seed. And here, right there, um, anybody hearing it there would have heard the word listeners in that the prayer that they prayed uh, three times a day, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. So Jesus is saying, you know, saying this is important. 
And the moment they hear this seed, I think they're probably thinking the seed of Abraham and the seed of the woman. So God's promise to humanity and the promise of a Messiah. Um, Is it not a farming culture as well, though? Yeah. There is also that... Pre- They'll have seen this. Well, this is how they get their. Boots. Well, that's what I love. I love about this picture, and it's like got um, Jesus teaching the disciples and the crowd, and you've just got it going on next to him. And it's like part of the genius of this passage is that Jesus was using something of their everyday experience. It's terribly mundane. Uh, mm. it's, it's an earthy illustration, but um, but going back, I think the other thing that's uh, Mark pointed out for us: this is not good farming technique. Uh, no farmer farms like this. Uh, um, g- y- y- no farmer goes and throws their seed on the rock. Um, and I was like, what would this be in your industry? Like drilling for oil anywhere? anywhere. Um, but it is kind in of like the world's kitchen. approach. Again, like th- there was a painting by this guy and it's like the-, the world is a bit like this, like just sowing information out, like throwing advertising at us wherever he goes. So there is sort of an element that the, the world does this too. But he says, first of all, you get no shoots. So he's scattering the seed, lands on the path, the birds come up and eat it, nothing happens. Then no roots, so it falls on rocky places, not enough soil, it's a bit. Um, and then stuff happens, and so the plant comes up, but it hasn't got the roots, so it dies. And then no fruits. So this is it, it comes around thorns that choke the plant, and so they can't bear, bear grain. But... Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and grew and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. Then Jesus said, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. And I think what's the, you know, the first place to kind of land this in is God is scattering his seed generously as well. The question is, am I good soil? And that's where we're going to start. We're going to expand from there. But am I there good is soil? there is a promise because, you know, there yeah. will be good fruit the, if I uh, am good soil. Where did Mark gave us? He said there are three or four constants and one variable. The four constants are God is constantly sowing. Everybody hears the word. Wherever God's seed is sown, it is contested. But God always gives growth. Then the return is variable. But the main variable is the quality of the soil. So the question is, am I good soil? Mm-hmm. Um, and let, let's carry on. So he then, the disciples are like, what's going on? I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't this. get it. And what I love here is they bring their stuckness to Jesus. They're like, I don't get it. They don't pretend that they've got it. They don't think that they've got it when they haven't. And they don't give up. So those are three things, so you know, when you're reading something, you're like, what does this mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's like, keep going. It's good news in itself, that. You can come to Jesus and go, yeah. I don't get it. But then he gives this answer. He says, uh, the secret's been given to you, but to those who the outside, and then he quotes Isaiah, they may be ever seeing, but never perceiving, ever hearing, but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. And it's like, what? Huh? I don't this understand. Is a shocking I bit. I thought you'd want them to be forgiven. Why wouldn't you want them? And I'm not going to answer that because we can do that as a question in a minute. And also, I haven't quite landed on something I feel confident in. Um, <laughs> not got a tweetable answer yet. But then he says, "Here is what it means to his disciples." And again, this does something strange here. He says, "The farmer sows the word." He doesn't say, "God sows the word." So he leaves a bit of ambiguity there. So mixing is, you know, well, yeah, and, I, and I, think, I think you'll see why in, in a bit. But it, again, it's this, he, he suddenly is explaining it, but he's also adding into new complexities, which draws us in again. So he says, some are like seeds sown on the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes away and the word, uh, and takes away the word that was sown into them. That makes me so sad. So, um, well, here again, you, you've got the no shoots, no roots, no fruits, but you also see the uh, what the church has always talked about, the world, the flesh, and the devil mm. are, are the three enemies uh, against um, ourself and growth uh, in Christ. So that's the first challenge. The second challenge is that the world comes and persecutes. So it says this, Others like seed turn a rocky place to hear the word and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root in themselves, they only last a short time. When trouble or persecution come because of the word, they fall away quickly. Um, and again, what does that mean? They have no root in, in them themselves. And we're going to give you that uh, later. But I think there is a, a sense of rootlessness, which I think is a really good challenge for us to think about. Because in our context in a city... 
often people are more rootless than in in smaller towns but also with our model of church but also 25 percent of people who were baptized last year are the first christians in their family how so cool like, is that that's, that's so cool but they don't know any of the bible they there's no other christians in their family all those things so that's a sense of rootlessness so there's a you know they've had the experience of alpha um probably online it was like 30 percent of people who got baptized last year the first time they came to church was to get baptized like Mm -hmm. how crazy is that um but i think that's a unique challenge for us in this season to be to be thinking about uh Mm -hmm. as well um and then you've got no fruits still others like seeds sown among thorns hear the word but the worries of life, the deceitfulness of wealth and desires for other things, the worry, wealth and wants of the world come in and choke it, making it unfruitful. Here it's almost like the soil is too fertile mm. and everything can grow. Um, but what really is interesting is here is this is basically the world's vision of you made it. Mm. You've got time to give attention to yourself through worry. You, you've got what you want and you've become secure in your wealth. And you can have all of those three and Jesus says, you're not fruitful. Mm. And that's because fruitfulness isn't just a nice plant. It's the plant that has a crop that then yields uh, 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 another harvest that might be 30, 60 or 100 times. Basically, the world's vision for us is too small. Yeah. Yeah. Always too small. And, And then it lands in this before we go to some more questions. Others like a seed sown in good soil hear the word and the interesting thing is all of these people heard the word it's not that these people heard the word and the others didn't it's the next thing they accept it and they produce a crop Mm. and the thing is i was kind of i'm still not sure about this but this might be the only bit that we're active in accepting it that's our only role in this because to produce a crop the field doesn't strive it just god makes it happen uh so the good soil enables you to hear because you can, if noise can be going on around you, but the hearing is that. Yeah, I wonder no, but what that here, word they, is. they hear the word, uh, but it's choked out. It, it's the, the variable isn't just hearing, it's accepting it. Mm-hmm. And, and a key question would be well, what does it mean to accept it? Um, and it produces a crop. Um, and again, as we've said uh, many times, that crop is later, greater, and the same. Mm-hmm. So when you're struggling in your discipleship, when you're struggling in reading the Bible and understanding it, Keep persevering because the fruit comes later, but it'll be greater uh, and it'll be the same. More it'll be, of yeah. what you're investing. Yeah. So it takes time. Be patient. It multiplies. Be grateful and you'll encounter Jesus. So be expectant. Um, you'll reap what you sow. Um, and let's go into some questions. And our, our questions will focus first on what it means for us to be good soil before we widen it up so Mm. i'll do the last one number four what would the equivalent of a ridiculously extravagant sower be in your area of industry like if you were going to take if you were going to contextualize this this uh, farming parable for your industry what would it be like for a farm the farmers like scattering seed everywhere i don't know like a Somebody drills for oil, just drilling anywhere. In your nan's kitchen. In your nan's kitchen. Verse 12, what does it mean? Verse 17, what does it mean? Worries, question seven. Worries, wealth, wants at that crowd out of, hang on. Worries, wealth, wants that crowd out of the world. What the heck was this question? You might have to read it. I can't read it. Shall I read the words? Yeah. Uh, Worries, wealth, (laughs) wants that crowd out the word. What does that look like for you? (laughs) And in the lives of those that you disciple. Um, And then if you've got time, and obviously there's a lot of questions, Tim Keller gave a fascinating sort of, uh, it was a conversation on Twitter about he'd seen some patterns in people who've walked away from the faith. Um, and this is his sort of understanding of that. And if you've got time, you might like to pause the screen now uh, on this and discuss this. And the question is, does this resonate? Does, do you find this helpful? Does this make sense to you? Or do you go actually disagree? Um, and you can parallel the three things he says that cause us to believe things with the, the three shoots, fruits and roots and, um, and so on in the passage as well. And so question eight is look at Tim Keller's description of how people lose their faith. Does this resonate with you? Will they have been able to see that on the screen there? Well, if not, you can pause it again. 
and look at that. And I'll also put it in the description. There we are. There you go. There we are. Okay, so the interesting thing, well, let's just answer. I'm not going to try and answer this one about this bit here because I've got three answers that I found in other people's commentaries. That's when I get stuck, I dig and I have certain commentaries that I go to and you can mm. just Google uh, and find different ones that sort of um, seem to be uh, helpful. Helpful, um, But those don't quite resonate. So you, I'll, I'll leave you hanging to, to work that one out. Um, this one was interesting. Well done for not trying to fix in all the things. Yeah, well, I, I can't. Uh, That's why we're doing this exegesis <laughs> so late. He's uh, been like, working on this all day. But since they have no root in themselves. So again, I, I couldn't really work that out by myself. And I, I looked at, at Charles Spurgeon's sermon on this. And he gave three... Uh, things he thinks it means dependent on externals so he says their faith is not fostered from within it's reliant on other things uh, like it, sustained by enthusiastic surroundings or this is called until you think about it too much it's like they've been baptized in boiling water and unless it's kept hot they cool down and i was like that's yeah no that's a bit weird but or, or tim hughes has this you're going to be a thermostat or a thermometer Thermometer just goes, ah, oh, yeah, I'll be like this. I'll feel the thermostat's like, like, let's turn the temperature up. Um, oh, I so want to be a thermostat. Uh, number two, the lack in the invisible. Faith involves the life of the visible and the invisible. Uh, there's the blade of grass, but there's no root. Uh, so uh, the hidden things aren't there. So repentance, prayer, secret communion with God. But also lacking continuance. He, he has this image of a plucked flower. can move around, but it's doomed. Uh, so a seed has energy enough to grow, but it needs to put a root down to continue to grow, to find more uh, um, energy, to continue a fresh supply of energy. And he said, basically, w- when people haven't got that root in within themselves in the secret life, they lack continuance. And what happens is they lose their joy, which leads to unsound doctrine, which leads to unholy living. And that's my his, energy um, supply is lagging. Come on, what's yeah. next? <laughs> This is a long one, baby. And you then, like totally geeked out this week. And then, um, and then, so that would be one of the ways that I would dig into um, into this. Um, to finish, though, this parable is not just about individuals. It's not just we can't just make it just about ourselves. This parable is um, about how the faithful remnant returning from exile are received in the land. That's one of the things that Jesus is highlighting. People are coming back uh, from the exile in Babylon and are they received in the land? And one of the things is they're received at first with joy, Mm -hmm. but then they're rejected. Um, Mm. And so there's one parallel there. This is also about how Jesus is received by people in his time, but it's also how his disciples are received in the land and And beyond. beyond. So having received the secret of the kingdom will we in turn become sowers of the word? I hope so. Yeah, Well, and I think that's the challenge of this passage. And I think the helpful thing about that is it's quite encouraging because it's it's this idea that God has sowed you. Mm -hmm. And so Yahweh sowed into the land over and over and over and it never yielded a crop. And then he sends his son, not just to sow his word, but be himself sown into the ground by dying and then rising again, and he'll yield a harvest, an abundant harvest. Mm-hmm. And now the lampstand that he is on is therefore the cross and resurrection, but also the church. And that's what we're to be. We're to be this lampstand that is um, this is that is a, a place where Jesus is made known. Um, and so this is question nine. And this is a question, and then it's to pray into. Mm. God has planted you. Where are you sown and what is the soil like? Why don't you pray into that for us now? Lord Jesus, I thank you that you have sown us into our workplaces. And um, I just get this sense that if you're feeling the repetitiveness of of the workplace at the minute and just um, be encouraged that that God is continually sowing you there every day and um, you will see fruit. yeah, beyond what you expect. So mm. be expectant. Um, Holy Spirit, for anyone who is struggling with the monotony at the minute, I um, I pray for joy and 
fresh perspective. Um, I ask Holy Spirit that you would fill them now with a fresh fire to go in to work tomorrow and or, or work remotely and, and just know that they are working from that place and that you are using them in that place. But also, Lord, I thank you for what you are doing in us and we just ask for, what what's the phrase? Um, greater and the same. That Later, one. greater. <laughs> more of that. And the same. And more Lord Jesus, give us patience, give us gratitude and Lord, we thank you that you want to meet with us and as we lean into your word, as we explore your parables, you will make yourself known to us. So we ask, Holy Spirit, come, help us be more faithful to you and help us be a fruitful, good soil uh, in the place that we are sown. Amen. 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 That prayer was like turning into an inception because we are soil and yet we are sown. Oh. And da, 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 well, that's da, why da, this da, reading da, da, is da, just da, da. so good. Yeah. Yeah. Have a great uh, discussion and time praying for each other and see you on Sunday. Bye.